I'm back. And if you're back, thank you for being back. If you're new here, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. I have two more cases that I thought I would just uh, film. A little bit different, although the end process is the same, but the circumstances to begin with are a bit different. So, here on the left, I have my Rincolalia Cattleya Pastoral Innocence. My first emergency repot of the season back in January or February or something. The outer rim of the pot cracked when I was lifting it out to flush. Then I couldn't keep it in that pot because as the orchid was growing, it was causing more tension. I was struggling to get the inner pot out because I didn't have enough rim to work with. Emergency repot, it needs to be done. I have to pot it up correctly now because I'm getting roots. My big problem is though, I have a sheath for the very first time on this orchid. And yeah, I kind of didn't want to have to do this. But another 12 months of leaving it in here is not going to do the job either. Another thing I look out for, especially when I'm trying to soak or flush my orchids, how much water goes back down in order for me to fill up a little bit more. This one didn't even need filling up. You know, sometimes air disperses and bubbles, this, that, and the other, and you top it up a little bit more. Yeah, well, not in this case. This pot is chock-a-block full. So I'm going to never mind the sheath. If it blooms, I'll be so happy. If it doesn't, at least I know the plant will be okay. This pot is full, not just of water, but all kinds of roots and things. It needs to be addressed. My Yokosuka story, turns out, same thing. Look at that pot. All that water, I only filled it up once. It never receded. So it's been in here two years, and it is that full that I have no water receding. It's coming out, and it's going to get rejuvenated. I have some new root growth coming, so that's going to help a lot in me not losing momentum on this plant. Stick around, if you will. I appreciate it. Let's have a look and see what's going on inside of these two. And if there's anything to discuss, I'll talk about it. If not, I'll see you when they've all been potted up. Very windy day, but I am wearing a dead cat. So I hope that that doesn't interfere too much with the quality of the sound. I'm going to start with what I consider could be my big, my biggest problem. <sighs> and when you know that, there we go. I was going to say, when the label doesn't come out easily, then you know what you're up against. This is going to be possibly a tough squeeze. Right. We will see if this is going to be a radical chop and change. Honestly, I don't mind either way. I would love to see the blooms, but you know, the health of the orchid is more important. I'm going to try and watch out for this root, but we never know. Let's get you out. And let's begin. What has grown in here should only be seven, eight months worth of roots from this growth. This is the first new growth of the season. This is the second. As I had no roots growing in January, I just went up pot. Again, opposite direction. Come on, come on, come on. Let go. Opposite direction of where the new roots are growing. When it comes to pouring out the letter, when feasible. I should have left that support on. Just 
just a second. I can see something terrible happening if I don't secure that one leaf. And that would not be nice. What I'm able to avoid and or try to avoid, I will do my best to do so. And then there's variables like clumsiness, you know, they come in, they factor in as well. <laughs> but let's let me secure this row, this one leaf first. It is very windy and that's a variable I cannot control when it blows against my leaves. Okay, just for the purpose of working with it. It's feeling solid, but that doesn't mean it's all good in here. Well, it at least managed to grab hold of the microfiber, so that's good. But you can see how oh I damaged a root tip. No, oh, that's a bummer. There's one. Ugh. You can see how much from the previous side had deteriorated. So I'll be cleaning all of this up and I'll come back when I'm done and show you what I'm left with. But all this is coming off. It's going to take a while. See you on the other side. So I'm about 30 minutes into this process and I wanted to show you a little in-betweeny sceney. <laughs> and uh, what I'm doing is inching my way in root by root and as it's so solid I'm going by a brown root like this and then I cut through it and then I start to dislodge bit by bit to get more into the root ball inside because that's where the problem was for me I couldn't clean this orchid up in my emergency reed pot so dead root I snip it and then I start to work around and around eventually I find the other side but what I'm not doing is taking it and ripping it because there are risks of doing this and tearing good roots. I mean, afterwards I might just snip them down anyway for a clean cut, but I'm trying to reduce the damage just by, you know, I've got a dead, dead root here. Okay, I'll just rip it off. No, I can't do that in this case because who knows where that is and what damage it's gonna do while I try to rip it out. So, patience is a virtue, we'll keep going. I am now almost, well, a little over an hour into this process and I'm getting there slowly and I'm being stubborn, persisting. I don't know who's winning. Ugh, I'm losing quite a few roots, but I'm also removing quite a few. So maybe this is 50-50 right now, but I do want to get in further, like really down in there because I can see a lot of decayed roots from the back that have sort of tangled themselves in. And that's what I want to get at. Now that I've come this far, you see these kinds of things here? I've already snipped it off. And one lekka bead at a time, I'm releasing it. That's where I'm at right now. Anything that is as long as this, and it snaps, I'm cutting it off straight away. This one, for example here, is a branching one and I heard it click, and I thought, okay, right, I'm just taking it off. I'm not going to guess if it's going to be okay or not. And I'll be back. We have arrived to the point where I'm okay now with leaving it as it is. Maybe cut this branching one off here because it is wobbly. And that's already a signal it's not going to go well. But, I didn't cut any corners, I stuck to my initial plan and I went right in, one lekka bead at a time, 
one dead root at a time. And I'm very grateful it is a cool, windy day. <laughs> yeah, I had to douse it several times just to keep it humid. Here's another kink. I don't know if you can see that root. It's kind of kink, not kinky, but it has a kink in it. So that's coming off, which is unfortunate because it is another growing root tip. But we have more that we managed not to attack. I love the feel of these root tips. I have to say I stopped fiddling because they are so silky. They feel so nice. Anyway, moving right along. I am going to cut the back off. I'm going to take it down to the last, well, the front four, which are these guys. And I've got potential back here. So I'm taking a rhizome cut right in here, right now. And only because I can, not because there's anything wrong, but at this point, this is a great time to do this. Let's see. Let's see if I can do the chop as a close-up and get it in focus. So these are the three I want. Let's look at the roots in the back. There we go. And I'm going in here. There we go. Beautiful, gorgeous. So let's check it out. Well, I managed to get a root out, but whether it's going to do anything at all to help, I don't know. I don't know if that's even going to survive. It's so loose. I'm going to leave it on. Let's get some cinnamon on that cut. Both cuts. I was not expecting to cut my pastoral innocence. And I think this is an opportune time. Now, I'm not going to be using this decker that I have underneath me again for this repotting because there's no, there's too much debris. But I do have something else prepared. Genie in a bottle. Where this one can live for a little while. Until it, if it decides to do something, and it has a little humidity to handle itself. Big, big orchid this. Big orchid. All right. Now I'm going to take out the other orchid and see what we're up against while the cinnamon dries on the pastoral innocence. All right. Up next, I have my, come here, Epidendrum renemarques crossed with Potinara free spirit. And this one is actually Rothara, or Rothara, Yokosuka Story, aka Sergioara, Yokosuka Story. Take your pick. <laughs> Schwerter didn't even think it was necessary to put the correct name on their label, so I just got it with a cross. But it is what it is. It is a Yokosuka story. I know it as Rothara. Rothara, Rothara. Like Scarlet O'Hara. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Pastoral Innocence took it quite out of me. I have, I normally say I'm going to do three a day that I need, that need to be done. But I'm only doing these two today. Because Pastoral Innocence took it out of me. Now, you see, I'm putting this orchid into the media with this orchid, and that could be considered cross-contamination, and yes, that is the case. But these orchids have been living next to each other, they've been touching each other, they've been, they came in the same shipment as each other, so I'm aware of that, and I'm fine with that. So she is doing fabulously, I like what I'm seeing. Good root system two years and you know what I'm tempted to do right I'm gonna cut her back I am first of all I need to get into 
here anyway because of all the moss. This is part of my fall treatment, my prep, so that the rhizome doesn't get buried when it gets colder. Thank you very much. It was nice having you during the summer. It was great, great help to keep things nice and humid around the base, but I do not need this proliferous growth of moss for the coming months. But I am tempted to take her back a notch. I want all these little bit of little ones gone. So I'm going to have to get in here and see exactly what I'm up against. She's also eaten her microfiber. Now, if I wasn't going to do anything, we'll be potting her up just like we did with the Dawiana. But here I want to get into her, get the little scraggly stuff off of the back and make her look pretty and not like, oh, look, I'm a seedling and I've grown up. No, I'm going to get her looking ready because she's got root growth coming and I'm going to take advantage of that. So I would like to cut her right there. That is my goal. Let's see if we can do this successfully. And yes, I have sterilized my secateurs between the two orchids, despite them being travel companions, shelf companions, etc. Okay, there, that didn't look right. See if I can provoke something back here. At that moment, that didn't look right. I'm glad I looked again. Now, let me see if I can do this on camera. And it was possible. Now, I'm going to go over the bowl so that Lekka doesn't go everywhere. Clean up, pot up. I shall be back. Oh, I've just put some fertilized water into their pots. And the satisfying sound of bubbling going through the Lekka. That gurgling sound, yes, and that has been missing from these two. I have not heard gurgling by flushing or anything, and it's back. Gurgling is good, especially when it comes to orchid roots and media. That means that there is oxygen in there. Let me just put you back on the tripod. Oh boy, okay. I actually had for my third orchid planned today, my Catnia Maxima, to do a cleanup because she may be producing roots soon, and I wanted to get ahead of that. However, pastoral innocence took quite long, much longer than I thought. I did not expect to cut the rhizome, but I did that. I did expect to cut the rhizome on my Yokosuka story, but she took much longer than I wanted to spend time with, and if I touch the Maxima now, I'm afraid I might have a little bit of, you know, fatigue symptoms that make you be less diligent, less cautious. So that's not going to happen. I don't know why I suddenly thought of checking this sheath to remove it. It just looked a little bit funky to me, but here we go. So out of two makes four. I didn't bring the bottle out because it's a cut in a bottle. We saw that earlier. But, um, yeah, let's see if uh, anything happens with that one. This one is now, at, I'm at the mercy of the graces of the pastoral innocence because my emergency repot was my emergency repot at the beginning of the year. This needed to be done. It was more than I wanted to do. I would never have had the courage to do it last year because she's precious to me and now I have a sheath and look what I'm doing. But it has to be done. I can't wait another 12 years. You saw the pot. And here I have two pieces. Got my Yokosuka story adult. And then let's see if the little one decides to throw out some kind of an eye. I don't see anything, but the root ball was impressive. I wasn't going to throw it away. We'll give it a go. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope that I can edit this down to something reasonable and not the four hours the whole process took me. <clears throat> Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.